Hello guys, it's me again, I'm Mar and I'm back with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna unbox the Sapphire Pulse 5700 XT and put it into the test versus my old GTX 1080 Ti, which is overclocked. Of course, I'm gonna try to overclock the Sapphire Pulse and I will do the testing at 1440p and I will put the results for the 4K as well. So, before we jump into the benchmarks and the unboxing, don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the channel, and let's start. Alright, as you can see, the results in Fire Strike and Time Spy are pretty much neck and neck, within 1000 points between each other. Also, keep in mind that the 5700 XT is running at 2075 to 2080 MHz on core clocks, while the memory is at 1850 MHz, and the 1080 Ti is running at 2050 MHz on core clocks and 6300 MHz on memory clocks. In Witcher 3 at 1440p, the 1080 Ti is ahead by 23 FPS, while the 5700 XT is still pushing more than playable average FPS as well, 1% low FPS. However, at 4K, we can see that the 1080 Ti is barely pushing above 60 FPS, while the 5700 XT is struggling to hit the 60 FPS mark on average. Also, don't forget these numbers are at max settings. With a slight adjustment to the graphical settings, the 5700 XT will surely push 60 FPS. Alright, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, here are the results are within 4 FPS. Interestingly, 1% low is a tad better on the 5700 XT. Also, at 4K high setting, even the 1080 Ti can't keep the 60 FPS mark, while also the 5700 XT is 7 FPS behind. As we can see in Call of Duty Warzone, both are providing a very very playable experience without any doubt at high settings. Insurgency Sandstorm seems to love Nvidia cards more. Keep in mind that the game is on max settings, I bet medium settings and texture set at high, the 5700 XT will indeed push around 144 FPS mark. Far Cry 5 at ultra settings, the difference are 10 FPS on average, while the 1% low is within margin of error which is 2 FPS overall. However, at 4K, we can still see that the 1080 Ti is still pushing 68 FPS on average, while having 63 FPS on 1% low, and the 5700 XT is barely pushing above 60 FPS at 4K. Monster Hunter World shows both very playable experience on both cards at high settings. While the 1080 Ti is leading by 9 FPS on average and 4 FPS on 1% low. However, at 4K, we can see both GPUs are struggling to keep up with this title at high settings. Alright, in Resident Evil 3, as we can see, the 1080 Ti takes the lead by 20 FPS on average and 23 FPS on 1% low. At 4K, we can clearly see the VRAM limitation on the 5700 XT by the 1% low FPS, while the 1080 Ti almost hitting above 60 FPS by 4 FPS. Alright guys, so I'm back after the benchmarks. Personally, for the price to performance ratio, and if someone is like playing strictly at 1440p at high refresh rate, this card can do wonders, especially for its price. I mean, the price to performance ratio is pretty solid as well. So guys, don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.